The main character in the film, Lockhart, is a young man who is solely focused on his career and lacks concern for anything else. His intense dedication to his work is so strong that he has placed his mother in a nursing facility, considering her presence to be a hindrance. In the film's opening sequence, Lockhart is summoned to a gathering with the company's executives and other members of the board. During the meeting, he proceeds to share a letter written by the CEO, Pembroke, which is meant for the board members. In the letter, Pembroke discloses that he is presently staying at a wellness retreat in Switzerland, enjoying a two-week vacation. Nevertheless, in the letter, Pembroke explicitly states that he has no intention of coming back and proceeds to expose the company for its involvement in unlawful and morally questionable financial activities. Moreover, Pembroke firmly expresses his refusal to endorse the company's proposed merger with another major financial corporation, cautioning the board members against attempting to reach out to him in the future. Upon reviewing the distressing contents of the letter, the board members collectively decide to task Lockhart with the responsibility of persuading Pembroke to return to New York. They make it clear that if Lockhart fails in this mission, he will bear the consequences for the entire scandal. With no alternative options, Lockhart reluctantly agrees and embarks on a journey to Switzerland. Upon arriving, he is chauffeured up the hill to the wellness spa by an individual named Enrico. As they engage in conversation, Enrico expresses his perplexity regarding the attraction of affluent individuals from various countries to this specific spa. Their dialogue is abruptly interrupted when an irate villager hurls a beverage at their vehicle. Interestingly, Enrico remains unperturbed, implying that such incidents are a regular occurrence in this area. He proceeds to elucidate that the villagers have a contentious past with the residents living on the hill. 200 years ago, the hill was under the ownership of a noble family. The final baron of this family developed an extreme fixation on maintaining the purity of his bloodline, leading him to conclude that only his sister was suitable to bear his child. When the church voiced its disapproval of this union, the baron renounced his faith in God. This decision did not sit well with the villagers, and on the night of the baron's wedding, they launched a violent assault, setting fire to the forbidden couple and subsequently destroying the entire castle. Subsequently, the site was reconstructed and transformed into a luxurious wellness spa catering to wealthy individuals who seek solace and a remedy for their inner void. In the subsequent scene, Lockhart arrives at the spa, only to discover that visiting hours have already concluded. Consequently, he schedules an appointment to meet with the manager. While waiting, he steps outside to make a phone call and happens to spot a peculiar window leading to an unsettling basement. After a while, he finally meets the manager and asks to speak with Pembroke. After taking vitamin droplets from a peculiar blue bottle, the manager tells him that their treatments are most effective when exposure to the stresses of the modern world are strictly limited. He reveals that the spa is built over an ancient aquifer that offers rejuvenating qualities. Lockhart looks at the pictures in the room and notices a man with bandages all over his body, posing in front of the main building. However, his gaze is abruptly disturbed when the manager tells him to come back after 7 in the evening when Pembroke will be done with his daily treatment. Before his departure, Lockhart consumes a full glass of water and expresses gratitude to the manager for their cooperation. However, on their way down the hill, an unexpected deer emerges from the woods and collides with their vehicle, becoming lodged in the windshield. This incident causes Enrico to lose control of the car, resulting in a crash into a nearby ditch. Three days later, Lockhart regains consciousness within a room at the same spa. Shortly after, Volmer, the director of the facility, approaches him and explains that Lockhart has sustained a leg injury due to the accident. Volmer informs Lockhart that he has already informed his company about the mishap and encourages him to partake in the spa's treatments. During his stay, as Volmer departs, Lockhart observes a man covering the window leading to the basement he had previously noticed, and to his horror, discovers a parasitic creature floating in his glass of water. Disturbed by the revelation, Lockhart covertly leaves his room and locates Pembroke within the bathhouse. He implores the former CEO to return home with him, but Pembroke claims he is unable to leave due to his ill health. Following his immersion in the water, Pembroke experiences a sudden resurgence of interest in the stock market, 
as if breaking free from a spell. Consequently, he agrees to return to New York and resume his leadership role in the company. Filled with enthusiasm, Lockhart hastily prepares himself and arranges for a taxi. While waiting for Pembroke, he encounters Victoria Watkins, an amateur historian, who guides Lockhart to the remains of a church where the Baron supposedly executed a priest. It is believed that people used to travel long distances for the miracles associated with the holy water. Lockhart shares with Victoria the Baron's fixation on bloodline purity, and she pledges to investigate further. Eventually, Lockhart encounters Hannah, the youngest patient at the institution. She considers herself unique because she is the sole patient allowed to consume the vitamins from a blue bottle, which Volmer and the staff also take. Later on, when Pembroke fails to appear and goes missing from his room, Lockhart confronts Volmer. The director alleges that Pembroke's condition abruptly worsened, necessitating his transfer to the next phase of treatment. Lockhart accuses Volmer of lying and exposes him for intentionally making his patients ill to exploit them for financial gain. At that moment, Lockhart experiences a nosebleed and collapses. Dr. Volmer transports him to his clinic for several tests, during which Lockhart notices a photograph of Hannah on Volmer's desk. When questioned about it, Volmer claims that Hannah holds significance to him due to a traumatic event she endured in her early years. Shortly after, Volmer reviews Lockhart's medical report and advises him to undergo treatment. Reluctantly, the arrogant American agrees, seizing the opportunity to steal Pembroke's medical file while Volmer is distracted. Following that, Lockhart proceeds with the treatment inside a water tank. However, an attendant becomes distracted, leading to an unexpected influx of eels into the tank, which induces panic in Lockhart. Desperate to escape, he inadvertently has his breathing tube pulled off by one of the eels, putting him at the brink of drowning. Fortunately, the attendant rescues him in the nick of time, pulling him out of the water. Lockhart exhales with relief and expresses his displeasure about the presence of the eels. However, to his surprise, they have vanished from the water entirely. Lockhart then returns to his room and proceeds to examine Pembroke's file, seeking more information. At that moment, as Lockhart gazes through the window, he observes a man escorting a patient into the former church. The next morning, Lockhart seeks information about the church from his historian friend, Watkins. However, she admits to being unaware of its current usage. Instead, she corroborates Lockhart's earlier belief regarding the Baron's illicit affair with his sister. Nevertheless, Watkins reveals that the villagers did not set the place ablaze solely due to the scandal. It emerges that the Baron had been conducting horrifying and twisted medical experiments on the peasants. Distorted human bodies, resembling desiccated mummies, were discovered by the farmers in their fields. Fearing for their own lives, the villagers united and brutally killed the royal couple. Upon hearing this account, Lockhart deduces that the Baron was likely searching for a cure to heal the ailing Baroness. Unexpectedly, a male nurse appears and swiftly escorts Watkins away for her treatment. In light of this development, Lockhart aimlessly wanders around the premises until he spots Hannah riding her bicycle. This sparks an idea within him. He proposes to Hannah that she show him around the town, offering a ballerina toy as an exchange. Hannah, who appears to be a kid mentally, agrees without hesitation. After an enjoyable and lengthy ride, Lockhart and Hannah decide to take a break and visit a local tavern for some food. To Lockhart's pleasant surprise, he discovers Enrico there as well. It turns out that Enrico survived the car crash and was generously provided with a new vehicle by the wellness spa. However, the specific reason for this gesture remains unspecified. During their time at the tavern, Lockhart engages in conversation with Hannah while sharing beers. Hannah discloses that her mother perished in a fire during her childhood and that her father will retrieve her once she is cured. She also lends Lockhart some of her vitamins. Subsequently, Lockhart bids farewell to Hannah at the bar and proceeds to visit Peter, the sole doctor in the town. Despite being a veterinarian, Peter examines Pembroke's medical file and reveals that the former CEO is experiencing tooth loss, likely due to chronic dehydration. This perplexes Lockhart, considering that the spa emphasizes the consumption of abundant water by its patients. He draws a connection between this anomaly, the Baron's experiments, and the desiccated bodies discovered in the field. Lockhart finds it peculiar that people are flocking to the spa in search of a cure, 
mirroring the Baron's quest to heal his ailing wife. Peter discloses that the Baroness was actually afflicted with infertility, further adding to the mysterious circumstances surrounding the spa's treatments. Following his conversation with Peter, Lockhart excuses himself to assist a dying cow that had consumed sewage water from the spa. To his shock, he discovers a stillborn calf and a number of eels when he opens the animal's stomach. Afterward, Lockhart returns to the bar and contacts his boss in New York, only to be astonished by the revelation that Volmer had never informed the company about the accident. Lockhart's boss instructs him to bring Pembroke back to New York within the next 24 hours. In a state of anger, Lockhart confronts Hannah, demanding answers as to why no one is permitted to leave the spa. He also inquires about Pembroke's location and the significance of the blue bottle vitamin. However, Hannah, being shy, refuses to provide any information. In a fit of rage, Lockhart becomes engaged in a physical altercation with another patron. The situation quickly escalates, putting Lockhart's life in danger. However, just in time, Volmer intervenes and rescues Lockhart. Without causing a scene, Volmer escorts Lockhart and the two patients back to the spa. Later that night, Lockhart once again observes the staff relocating patients to the church, raising further suspicion and intrigue. Lockhart experiences his tooth falling out and promptly notifies the receptionist about it. Taking advantage of the nurse's absence while fetching medicine, Lockhart searches through her files and locates Pembroke's assigned room. Along the way, he encounters Watkins and informs her about the resurgence of the Baron's experiments. In return, she discloses that the Baroness was not infertile, as she was actually pregnant on the night of the wedding. Prior to being burned alive, the baby was forcibly removed from her womb and discarded into an aquifer, where it miraculously survived. Subsequently, Lockhart discovers the room where Pembroke is supposedly lodged, only to discover that the elderly CEO, along with other patients, are confined within water tanks. Despite his attempts, Lockhart fails to free Pembroke. Unexpectedly, Volmer arrives and catches Lockhart in the act. As punishment, Lockhart is restrained and subjected to having a hole drilled into his front tooth. In the subsequent scene, Lockhart manages to escape from the spa and heads to town with Enrico. He proceeds directly to the local police station and reports Volmer's experiments. Shortly thereafter, the sinister director is summoned to the station, where Lockhart accuses him of perpetuating the Baron's experiments and being responsible for Pembroke's death. Contrary to Lockhart's accusations, Volmer counters by claiming that Lockhart has succumbed to Watkins' conspiracy theories. Volmer proceeds to summon Pembroke, revealing that the CEO is alive and in good health. Confused by the turn of events, Lockhart begins to question his own sanity, considering the possibility that he may have been experiencing hallucinations. Consequently, he willingly returns to the spa with Volmer. In the following days, Lockhart undergoes multiple treatments that gradually alter his behavior and perception, causing him to adopt the belief that he is unwell and in need of a cure. However, one day, while composing a note to his employers, Lockhart experiences a sudden moment of clarity. Seizing the opportunity, he smashes a glass and employs a shard to cut open his cast. To his astonishment, Lockhart discovers that his leg was never actually broken. Motivated by his newfound realization, Lockhart breaks through the gate of the church and ventures inside, discovering Volmer's laboratory where he conducts his nefarious experiments. Furthermore, he uncovers an underground area containing a pool where dead bodies are discarded and fed to the eels. Shockingly, one of the deceased individuals is Mrs. Watkins, suggesting that her knowledge had become a danger to her own well-being. Suddenly, Lockhart encounters a worker, but he successfully subdues the individual before making his escape. Meanwhile, Hannah is utilizing the pool when she experiences her first menstrual period. Strangely, the eels begin to swim in a perfect circle around her without causing any harm. However, Hannah becomes frightened and hastily exits the pool. Frantically moving through the rooms, she coincidentally encounters Lockhart. Although he tries to explain the situation, a terrified Hannah strikes him and flees. Shortly after, Hannah approaches Volmer, who is dining with his patients. Lockhart follows her and loudly proclaims that Volmer is a deceitful liar, intentionally contaminating the water to make everyone ill. Unfortunately, the patients disbelieve Lockhart's claims and instead unite against him. 
Overwhelmed, Lockhart loses consciousness and later awakens imprisoned within a chamber. Subsequently, Volmer approaches Lockhart and begins divulging crucial information. He reveals that the eels typically have a lifespan of just a few years, but within the spa's aquifer, they can live for up to 300 years. However, for humans, this same water is deemed toxic, which explains why the majority of the patients are succumbing to illness. Centuries ago, the Baron made a discovery that a unique filtration process could render water suitable for human consumption. However, this method involved using living humans as filters, subjecting them to immense suffering. The Baron, devoid of any concern, callously sacrificed countless unwilling peasants until an enraged mob eventually brought about his demise. After disclosing the dark secrets, Volmer forcefully inserts a tube into Lockhart's throat, allowing the entry of eerie eels into his stomach. These eels supposedly extract the vitamins from Lockhart's digestive system, which purportedly bestows immortality. As a result, Lockhart undergoes dental treatment and undergoes a transformation akin to the other patients. He becomes trapped in a delusion, believing that he is unwell. In the interim, Volmer gifts Hannah a fresh garment and takes her as his wife. Now that she has experienced her first period, he wants to copulate with her and continue their bloodline. Returning to his room, Lockhart experiences another instance of mental clarity as he examines the notes left by Watkins. Among them, he comes across a portrait captured some time after the fire. Breaking the portrait, to his astonishment, he discovers an image depicting a man with bandages intertwined with the hand of a young girl. Later on, it is revealed that Hannah is actually Volmer's daughter and he is the same Baron who survived the fire and assumed various identities over two centuries. Operating under the guise of a wellness spa, Volmer continued his unethical experiments by killing innocent individuals and extracting the vital substances from their digestive systems to maintain his immortality. He also administered these substances to Hannah, which led her to believe she possessed special qualities. In a subsequent scene, Volmer takes Hannah to a room with malicious intentions. Fortunately, Lockhart arrives just in time to intervene, provoking Volmer's anger and prompting him to reveal his scarred face. Volmer attacks Lockhart, but Lockhart evades him and sets the room ablaze. The fire rapidly spreads throughout the castle. Lockhart tries to rescue Hannah, but Volmer assaults him and attempts to eliminate him near the eel pool. At this critical moment, Hannah, now aware of her father's monstrous nature, manages to free herself and rushes to save Lockhart. She strikes Volmer with a shovel, plunging him into the eel pool where he becomes their prey. Lockhart and Hannah escape as the patients and staff flee the burning castle. They take Hannah's bike and ride away under the cover of night. On the road, Lockhart and Hannah encounter Lockhart's superiors, who have arrived to assess the situation. They inquire about Pembroke, but Lockhart informs them that the old man is no longer present. When they insist he gets into the car, Lockhart declines. The movie concludes as Lockhart continues riding into the night, wearing a sinister grin on his face. If you want interesting movie recaps like these, like, share, and subscribe to follow us for more movie recaps.